The U.S. has been able to pursue unlimited deficit spending, unlimited debt expansion, simply because of both domestic and foreign purchases of U.S. debt. It's seen in the financial industry to be as good as gold. It will never fail. As Alan Greenspan said, they can always print money to pay the debt. And so institutions, corporations, individuals, and everyone in between have consistently invested in U.S. debt. But who will buy? it if the current biggest owners decide to stop. You came here for the truth, so let me unveil that for you. That's the topic of today. I, of course, want to discuss my favorite and yours, Janet Yellen. You have to look at what's been happening up until this point. Leading up to this point would tell you perhaps the direction in which we could head from here. Now, what we're looking at with U.S. debt is extremely important. That's one big factor because you cannot consistently add more to the debt without consequences. Of course, you can. You can make the debt as high as you want. Look where it is today. I mean, every year it seems to be adding trillions and nobody bats an eye. Nobody blinks. Nobody cares anymore at this point. But we have to understand, if nobody's buying it anymore, who will? And I'll just cut to the chase, because if you know how I am here on this channel, for my friends who've been watching for a long time, I don't like to beat around the bush, the Fed. The Fed is going to have to buy it. And that is a scary sight, because we've already seen them print up trillions of dollars. What are they going to do when they've got to monetize the debt at a rate that they haven't been dealing with so far? And of course, we know what happens to the currency in that situation. The first thing that I wanted to show you before we go any further into the articles I have prepared for you is the major foreign holders of treasury securities. This is the newest information, but of course, it's always uh, back. They're actually the numbers are from October 2020. And all I'm trying to, just trying to show you is that these are the biggest countries that are investing in US debt. And this is the just the, I'll just read a few Japan, China, UK, and then we get into the others, which I do believe is not actually the countries themselves. They are not trying to diversify their holdings. This is often shell companies and so on, because you see Ireland, Luxembourg, go down a few. We got Switzerland, Belgium, go down even more. You got Cayman Islands and so on. But Ultimately, what we can see is that these countries here, or whoever they're represented by in this case here, just showing you the names, it just gives you some insight as to what they're holding on to right now today. And if the debt is to expand to a great degree, which likely it will, who is going to buy it all up? It looks like, at least in near term, China's been, again, letting go some of their treasuries. This has been a consistent trend overall. If you look at it back from about 2013, they've been slowly but surely getting rid of that. And you can see others that have picked up the slack. So it all depends on where we're looking. But if the debt increases to a dramatic degree, how can they ever pick up the pace? The wonderful, the fantastic, the lovely Janet Yellen, right here, Wall Street Journal, poses this question. The debt question facing Janet Yellen, how much is too much? Treasury Secretary nominee supports the plans that add trillions to the U.S. borrowing a turnabout in economic thinking. Well, you know, it's ridiculous because they all want more spending. It doesn't matter if it's Janet the Wonderful. It doesn't matter, if it matter you know, whoever, Munchkin, put in whoever you want. They all do the same thing. Deficit spending, increasing the debt, print more money, lower the interest rates. And all in all, if they would simply allow everything to actually detoxify and clean and heal itself, it would have been over a long time ago. If the financial crisis would have actually been allowed to become a proper collapse, yes, it would have been painful. But for a lot of people, still today, over 10 years later, it is actually still the pain experienced through this 
this entire time frame. And instead, if you actually would have allowed it to collapse, let those institutions fail, the healthy ones would have picked up the pieces. Those other individuals out there would have been out of work just like they were millions of people out of work. But then as things were rebuilding, everything would have made more sense in time. But today we're still dealing with the rot, with the mess and with the disgusting underlying issues that are always present because of the activities of the central bank and the government themselves. Now, I'm not going to get into the article too much. It is quite long, as well as the next one. I'll show you a lot of information in here. I just want to touch on a few points. Today, quite frankly, is going to be more of a rant. I'm uh, in one of those moods. But what we can see here from the stats, I'll try to give you as many stats as I can. I've spent most of my career worrying about the effects of government debt. And as I've been doing that, interest rates have been falling point by point by point. And we have seen that, of course, and uh, basically since 1980, interest rates have been heading downward. And in some places around the world, they've actually gone into the negatives. There are different theories about why that happened. One is China's emergence as an economic power and the growing wealth of its citizens created a surge in global saving. Former Fed Chairman Ben you got to love him. Helicopter Bernanke called it a global savings glut, which is absolutely not true. Global savers put aside 26% of their money in 2020, up from 24% in 2000. That's according to the IMF. Much of the trillions of dollars in new saving flowed into the U.S. Treasury market. So this is where they're parking their money. But ultimately, if they feel that there's a better place for it, they will move it to a different area. And who is left holding on to all that garbage? At the same time, U.S. private sector investments slowed for reasons economists are still sorting out. Explanations include an aging population and diminishing investment in big machinery as the economy became more service-oriented and factories moved to China. They get into more factors there, but at the bottom, there's just one point I wanted to mention. By the time Miss Yellen became Fed Vice Chairwoman in 2010, battles over large budget deficits consumed Washington once again. You know, right now, I think that we can honestly say that that is not the case. We know what's happening because nobody ever stops a bill from going through these bills are thousands of pages long, and they always get passed. And there might be one or two or three that might say, you know what, no, I'm voting no on this. And they are ridiculed. They are heckled. They are threatened. And if only people would actually read some of the bill, they don't even have to read the whole several thousand pages that, by the way, get signed before being read. They can just read some of the points and they would be freaked out by it. But no, they name the bill so smartly and they'll call it, you know, the CARES Act. They call it the Patriot Act. And that's because they can get the people to rally around it because they know they will not read it. Even if they are allowed to read it, they absolutely would not because they're, you know, keeping up with the Kardashians or whatever it is. This just tells you how they do it. And it's very clear to me that as the debt rises, we've got more of a problem. But the people themselves are simply doing the exact same thing. They're taking on more debt. They're taking on things that they cannot afford. They're buying homes that are too big for them, that they do not need. And instead of prioritizing their health, instead of prioritizing maybe their food, maybe you know different things that are in my opinion, the most important, they're worried about keeping up with the Joneses or the Kardashians. They're trying to you know, get the latest model of their SUV and they're trying to buy a home that's got the pool in the backyard, which they might live in an area where you can only use the pool for about 60 days and that's it, time to close it up. It's, a, it's just nonsense today what we're seeing. And that has to, of course, be very painful at some point. Here are a few charts because, you know, you can't go on Money GPS video without getting some charts. Debt dynamics. U.S. interest rates have been falling for decades. As you can see, as I described earlier, 1980 up until the present, they've been going down and down and down. That happens to be the 10-year treasury. But you look at any of them, they've been following the same trajectory going 
down into the ground. The expectation of negative interest rates, according to the market, has been there. Janet Yellen, in fact, had said, if it were positive to go into the negative, I would vote for that. So she had said that, and this is actually before before she became the chair. But, you know, regardless, you know that these central bankers would do it. They would do it. They would go into the negative, even though there is absolutely more than enough evidence to show you that actually negative interest rates have no positive benefit, regardless. As rising global savings pour into U.S. debt, you could see the savings as a share of the GDP in general has been increasing as well. But, you know, the actual amount of money that people save, I would argue, is not the case. Perhaps if you look at the top 1% because they do have the most wealth, so maybe they are saving more of that, but not in the, in the let's say, the bottom 50%, not in the bottom even 80%, I would have to wager. And you just look around, taking uh, at the bottom left over there, debt as a share of the GDP, not only has it risen at a ridiculous pace, a ridiculous pace that we haven't seen since the 1940s, the, the actual forecast is completely off the charts. And that's not even including all of the unfunded liabilities, which are put off the books. We don't have to worry about that. Just keep quiet about it. This is just telling us where we are at and where we're going. Dollar shorts mount before Yellen outlines market-based policy. You could see for yourself here dollar bears. Hedge funds ramp up short dollar bets to the highest since 2018. And that direction is very clear. As you can see throughout 2020, things have really changed. Going back to levels from 2018. Investors may take Janet Yellen's expected endorsement of a market-driven exchange rate as an additional green light for the U.S. currency's long-term downtrend. Investors are already doubling down on wagers that stand to profit if the currency weakens further. And you know what they want to do. There is a massive wave of money printing that has already taken place. Seeing, I've seen the numbers depending on which calculation of monetary supply you're looking at. Between 20 and 30% of all of the money in the U.S. was printed in 2020. Now, 2021 could actually be even worse. We'll see what happens, of course. Looking down here, we interpret Yellen's view to mean that the U.S. government is unlikely to stand in the way of an ongoing market-driven dollar depreciation. There's no challenge to the current dollar downtrend. We'll see what happens. If this does continue, you know, we've seen the currencies fluctuating wildly over the years. It's not the first time you would have a weakened U.S. dollar. I mean, there's been so many examples. But to see it in addition to what's been happening with all of this currency that's been pumped up, I mean, I don't know how the Federal Reserve is going to deal with it all, but we know that they've got a printing press ready to go. I thought this was funny here. The wealthy are investing like a market bubble is here, or at least near. So this article and the next one I'll show you from CNBC. A majority of investors with $1 million or more in a brokerage account believe the stock market is in a bubble or close to being in one. But the bull market will continue for now, those wealthy investors say, with belief stocks will rise this quarter and the risk tolerance increasing in the first quarter. Millionaire investors are making portfolio changes to reflect where the market is most pricey, such as in large cap U.S. stocks and where stocks are underpriced, including internationally. So this is the portfolio rebalancing. But let's be very clear. You know where all the money's at. You know the $2 trillion companies are gaining steam and they are buying absolutely everything they need to. They are just issuing debt, which they have no need to do so because they're sitting on so much of it, so much cash, and yet they issue debt. Why? Because they're going to get it bought up from them just like the U.S. government. Now, if something changes, then we have a big problem. How to stay in stocks if the record market has you fearing bubble. I just thought it was so funny because, you know, they're clearly trying to put you into one direction, saying 
don't leave the market. We've got a lot of advertisers that rely on it. So we're going to put these articles out there every single day to make sure that you stick around. And oh yeah, click on our little advertisements and our supposed articles that oftentimes are actually just advertisements. But anyway, the S&P 500 has outperformed international markets, emerging markets, and small cap stocks for multiple years. The price growth gap between the S&P 500 growth and S&P 500 value is as wide as it was in December 99 before the dot com crash. For investors worried about the narrow group of large cap tech uh, winners that have led this bull market as rates tick up, a focus on recent market laggards may offer for one way to stay invested. Basically saying those stocks that haven't done as well, now's the time to put your money into those. I mean, this is financial advice, what they give. I don't think that anybody should be reading an article and then dropping their savings, their hard-earned savings into something. But it is information that I wanted you to know because it's important to stay on top of all of it. Quick note here, just wanted to give you some insight as to what's happening. I've talked about so many businesses that have been leaving, uh, let's say New York, California. They've been moving to Texas. They've been moving to Arizona. They've moved to Florida. And you could see 0.72 to expand with Florida offices as managers head south. There have been numerous big companies that are opening offices. They're not moving everybody over, but they are certainly starting operations in a different place or they're expanding in the places that they are already there. They might have, let's say, one floor in a building and now they're adding another floor or adding another building and so on. So this is just a trend that looks like it will continue for the foreseeable future that is not looking good for areas with higher taxation. So if you live in one of these areas, if you want to invest in one of these areas, that might create at least for a period who knows how long it would take to fill in the gap but certainly a period in which there is you know depressed housing prices commercial retail all that may actually be affected by it so we'll see what happens that's all for this video if you found it informative hit that thumbs up button when you do you are supporting me i want to thank you for that if you want to learn about e-commerce i'm talking about selling stuff online to make money i have a free e-course for you the amazon gps.com all right have you seen these two books these have what you need to know about the financial system the central banks how they operate the debt everything it's all explained very easily here so definitely check it out click on the link in the description and it'll take you over there so you can flip through the pages of the books for yourself and if you haven't seen this video yet you definitely want to check it out click it i'll see you there